Amen. Husbands, if your wife is here, give her a kiss, and then you may be seated. And some of you haven't kissed your wife all week long, and pastor don't tell you to kiss her. I'm just kidding. No. Um, and I'm going to invite everyone, if you brought your Bible, let's open up our Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1. And um, if you want to follow along, we're, I'm going to be in a couple of places. I'm going to be in, in John, chapter 1, and then we're going to go to Colossians, chapter 1. We're going to come back to John, chapter 1, probably finish in Genesis, chapter 1. All, all of them, chapter, chapter 1, so, so easy to find. Um, if you just want to stay in the Gospel of St. John chapter 1, you're, you're perfectly fine there. In my teaching today, uh, before I get into my teaching, I want to give you three words. Um, three words for the, for, for word, for the word word. Uh, we have to understand that when we read the Bible... We're reading the Bible um, in, in English. Many of you, some of you might even have your Bible in Spanish. Um, but, the, but the New Testament, uh, more specifically, was written originally in Greek because Greek was the, the language that dominated. It's kind of like today, if, if you want to do business, commerce, uh, you, English is the language that dominates. And so that's why um, kids all over Latin America, kids all over... Um, Asia, all over Europe, they, they study English um, because they want to do business with, uh, uh, and English seems to be the language, right, that dominates. Uh, and 2,000 years ago, when uh, John writes his gospel, uh, the Romans ruled the world. There was a saying that said, the sun never sets on Rome. That means wherever the sun was, it was above Rome. Uh, there was another saying that all roads lead to Rome, right? That means that wherever you were at, no matter where in the world, if you got on a road somehow or another, it would lead to Rome. But the philosophy that ruled in the time, the language that ruled in the time, was Greek. And in Greek, uh, there is a word called rema, right? Rema. And um, because I speak Sp Spanglish, I'll say rema, right? And Rema is, is exactly that. It is a word. Um, it, it's sort of like when you're reading the Bible and, and there's a verse or a phrase or, or maybe one or two words that, that you like. And you're like, man, that's, that's like for me, right? That's Rema. You know, the, the Lord has, has Rema for you. The, the Lord has given you a word. Uh, this happens often after a, a service. Someone will come up to me and, and they'll say, um, Pastor, um, it never happens in public church. Always happens in the Spanish services. I don't know why, but anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, someone will come and they'll say, like, Pastor, uh, man, that word, that word was for me. And I'm like, oh, that, that's great, that's great. And then the next person will say, Pastor, that word, that man, that, that message, that was for me. And I bet, I bet that if we were to grab both people and ask what specifically was for you, they would give me two different things. Because in the message, there was something specific for this person and something different specific for this person. And that difference in that word, that's rema, right, rema. Now, the other word, maybe you've heard of this word, is logos, right, logos. And logos is like the entirety. For instance, in the preaching, logos would be the entire message, while rema is a specific word in the message. When we look at the Bible, the entire Bible, from Genesis to Revelations, that's logos, right? Rema would be like a specific verse that ministers to you, right? So there's Rema and there's logos. Then there's a verb, right? Verb. And, and last week, without knowing what I was going to teach this week, I touched a little bit on, on what a verb is, right? And a verb is a class of word with which actions, processes, um, or um, that, that exist that affect people or things that are expressed, right? So, so it's a word that expresses actions or processes that affects people or things. We say it simply, we just say, oh, a verb is action, right? You know, an action word, verb, okay. I say all this and, and, and I'll, I'll explain right now as we read John chapter one, verse one. John chapter one, verse one starts off and says, in the beginning, the word already existed. All right. Now this word, right, for the word, in Greek is the word logos. All right. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. All right. 
In the beginning, the logos, let's go back to verse 1. In the beginning, the logos already existed. The logos was with God and the logos was God. That's what it's saying, right? Verse 2, it says, He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything. Now notice this. Everything was created through him and nothing was created except through him. That means everything, everything that exists was created through the word, right? Through the logos. Verse 4. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. I like that, right? The darkness can never extinguish the light. You, you ever notice that? Um, it doesn't matter how dark it is, and it doesn't matter how small the light is. Last night, um, you know, we were trying to go to bed, and, um, and I'm the type, I, I need the room dark, right, to go to sleep. And Rebecca Rose has this little lantern, like little double-A battery lantern, and so she wanted it in bed, so I gave it to her, and she has it on. So then she's all, here, Poppy, and so I turn it off. We're going to sleep. And she's like, no, turn it on. Put it on the table. And I'm like, no, 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 because I, I face the table. I'm like, if, if you have this light in this room, you, you have it on your side where I'm not seeing it, or we're going to turn it off, right? Because that little light, it's a little AA batteries, right? That little light, man, it just, like, it's so bright in the dark room. I mean, it's just like, like, I feel like I'm going blind. I, I, I'm, I'm a big exaggerator, as also, you know, I'm, I'm constantly like, man, turn off the lights, it's so bright in here. And, and Rebecca, she sees me sometimes, she's like, papi, lights hurt eyes? I'm like, yeah, the light hurts my eyes. I'm constantly, my wife gets all mad because I'm like, turning off, I'm turning off the lights because the bill, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, they, they don't understand that. But anyways, I'm totally off track. Let me get back on track. So, I like this, right? The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Okay. To finish in this part, let's read verse 14. Verse 14 says, <laughs> all right, thank you, I was going to pull out my own. says, so the word became human, in case we don't know who the word is, like I don't get it. The word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Who was the word? The word is Jesus, right? That's what he's talking about. The word is Jesus, right? Let's go to back to verse 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. Some Bibles may say, in the beginning was the Word. Uh, King James Version probably says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? In the beginning was the Word, right? In the beginning was the Word. But this is important that we would understand the beginning, right? Let me tell you that there's a lot of problems and issues that happen around us because we don't know history, and we don't know the beginning, right? If we look at Genesis and, and Exodus, Genesis finishes with God's people going into Egypt, all right? The Hebrew people, they go into Egypt, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they go because Joseph, a Hebrew, a Jew, saved Egypt. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream. He saved him. And so when they came in, everything's cool. It's all great. But 400 years later, the Bible says that there arose a Pharaoh, a king, who knew not Joseph. I mean, who, who knew not, yeah, Joseph, right? Uh, as I'm thinking in Spanish, and it's Jose. And I'm like, wait, is Jose and Joseph? I get a little confused there, right? Uh, who knew not Joseph. So what happened was that the, a king arose who didn't know the history, who couldn't appreciate, and therefore what happened? He, he turned them into slaves and began to mistreat them. And then the ten plagues happened, Passover, and etc. cetera. Right? Then look at our own country, right? United States of America. No, nobody wants to leave. Everybody that hates this country, they don't want to leave. And if you watch the news and you, and, and you go to the, uh, you go to school, you go to, especially you go to university, I mean, this is the worst country ever. It's, it's the most racist country. It's the worst country. We treat the people the worst and everything. But I've been to the border. And literally every day, there are hundreds of people that are risking their lives, that are paying five to $8,000 a head to come into the most racist country. There's a, there's a disconnect, right? There's a disconnect. Yes. Well, 
Why is this country racist? People will say, well, because this country had slavery. Right? Well, when this country had slavery, all countries had slavery. Right? But this is the only country that there was a civil war. And tomorrow we celebrate Memorial Day, where tens of thousands, close to 100,000 people died to bring freedom to all. And that's why people risk their lives today to come to this country. But you see, if, if we don't know history, we don't appreciate history, we only see one part, we only see one glimpse, we only see the news, and then all of a sudden we think, that's how it is, right? That's how it is. Well, there's people all over the world that have figured out that's not how it is, and that's why they're risking their lives to come here, right? Many of the people that are here, your parents probably were one of those people, right? Um, or your grandparents. So it's important that we would understand the beginning, history, right? Go to the beginning. Last, uh, uh, I was going to say last week, but it wasn't last week. A couple of weeks ago, I talked on, uh, it was Mother's Day, right? We had Mother's Day. It was a good turnout for Mother's Day. We're going to have a better turnout for Father's Day. Amen. All right, come on, man. Y'all disappointed me with that. That was a weak amen. Let's try it again. It was a good turnout for Mother's Day, but for Father's Day, we're going to have a better turnout. Amen. Yeah, there we go. The men are going to show up. We're going to show up strong, right? And like that. Uh, I, man, we, I, let me tell you, you, dads, you're not going to leave disappointed. I'm, I'm just saying, I've been working on something for you. Because you know me, man. I always, I, 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 I'm partial to the dads, right? I, I'm partial to the dads at, at church. But anyways, don't want to get too much off topic. But just don't miss it. I'm just telling you, don't miss it. Because you're going to come later. Pastor, can I get one? No, you should have come Father's Day. I'm not going to give you something I gave on Father's Day the following week. It's not Father's Day anymore. So, no, anyways. So, um... <laughs> Just telling you, uh, the beginning, right? Many of us, we have issues. Actually, let me rephrase that. All of us have issues. El que no tiene issues, levanta la mano, right? You know, like, we, we all have issues, right? And let me tell you why we have issues. We have issues because of things that happened in the past, right? If you grew up in a house that was abusive, you got issues. If you grew up in a house where there wasn't a father or, and a mother who loved each other, who showed you love, who were a testimony of like, this is what a, a marriage should look like, and you're married now, you've got issues, right? If you grew up and somewhere along the line, growing up, you were abused, rather physically or spiritually or emotionally or sexually, today, you got issues. And the way you act and react, or the way I act, we act and react to certain things, or maybe even certain people in our lives, has to deal with looking to the beginning and being like, oh, see, that happened there. And because that happened there, this is happening here, right? And when you can do that, you can also look to the future. And looking to the future, you can understand this, that if everything was created through the verb, for the verb, through the word, for the word, through the logos, for the locals, if everything was created through Jesus, for Jesus, even though that happened in the past, today I'm here in Jesus, and Jesus gives you this promise. Hear ye, all things are made new. All the old has passed, but everything is made new. You're a new creature in Jesus Christ. You're a new person in Jesus Christ. So you don't have to live in that when Jesus has brought something different for you. And this is why it's important to understand in the beginning, in the beginning. Then, verse 3. Right? Verse 3 says, God created everything through Jesus, and nothing was created except through him. Right? Everything was created through him, and nothing was created except through him. Right? Now, Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says it like this for through him speaking of jesus speaking of the logos god created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth he made the things we can see and the things we can't see such as thrones kingdoms rulers and authorities in the unseen world everything was created through him and then what does it say for him everybody read that last sentence Everything was created through him and for him. Let's say it out loud. Everything was created through him and what? And for him, right? That, that means that your, your husband that, you know, doesn't, didn't come to church today because he's still drunk from last night. 
He was created through him, for him. Your cousin, the one with all the drama, you know who I'm talking about. Don't mention her name. We're just praying for her. She was created through him, for him. Your boss, the one that, that, as we say in Spanish, te hace la vida pesada, right? Like that always gives you a hard time, uh, overlooks you and gives everybody else a pro, uh, you know, has favorites, was created through him, for him, right? Many years ago, like this year, we celebrated a 40-year anniversary uh, of, of ministry here at the church, like Iglesia del Pueblo. And in radio, we have 20-year uh, anniversary. 20 years ago, um, I, I used to be the one that dealt with all the pastors that wanted to buy time in the radio station. So they used to come, and they was like, I, I want to speak to the pastor. So I'm like, oh, I'm the pastor. And they would be like, oh, you're the young pastor. I want to speak to the other one, right? And so they used to call me El Pastor Joven, right, the young pastor. Man, let me tell you, it's been a long time since anybody has called me the young pastor, right? It really has. I was just thinking about it today, and I'm like, man, it's been, it's been a while. I don't know why. I don't know. I guess, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been a minute, right? It's been a minute. Anyways... I used to teach this Sunday school class. It was a lot of people here were part of that Sunday school class where uh, it was, you know, college age, 11, 12 grade uh, college age. And, um, and years ago, uh, we did this study on, on evolution, right? On evolution versus creation, right? Evolution, let, let me tell you, evolution is a bunch of bunk, right? It is. Evolution only talks about the past, you, you can explain anything with evolution. I mean, absolutely anything with evolution. Birds, you know why birds have, have wings? Because too many cats were eating birds, so eventually they developed wings to fly. <laughs> alligators, you know why alligators have so many teeth? Because when they would try and chew, you know, it was just taking too long, and, you know, and they used too much energy, so, so over time they developed a lot of teeth, right? That means that, you know, it took millions of years to develop all those teeth, and so there was millions of years of alligators with no teeth. You know, like, like I mean, they, you, you can use it to, to explain anything, anything. Sense of smell. Well, the reason we have a sense of smell is because, you know, our ancestors, they used to walk in and there was like poisonous gases, but then we developed a sense of, a sense of smell too. You, you see, you, evolution is used to describe it. But it's never used to tell us what's next. You ever, you ever notice that? That they never tell us what's the next evolution, what's, how are things going to evolve next? That, that's not science. That's not science. I have a pin right here. If I drop this pin, my hypothesis is that the pin will fall. All right? If I drop the pin, what's going to happen? It's going to fall. How do you know it's going to fall? Because you've dropped the pin many times. Right? So my hypothesis is if I let go of this pin, it's going to fall to the floor. The experiment is that I let go of this pin, it falls to the floor. Then I must repeat the experiment, do it again. And if it is reproducible, then that is a truth. That's a law. We call it what? The law of gravity. Right? You can't do that with evolution. <laughs> Everything is always, when I was young, everything was millions of years, now it's billions of years, now it's trillions of years, right? The older I get, the, the more zeros they're adding to it, you know? And I remember that years ago, many years ago, back when I was the young pastor, Pastor Joven, and I was doing this, you know, I was preparing to teach on evolution and creation. And, and one of the funny things of evolution is, well, I'll get to it in a minute, but anyways, I came across this, this quote, and, and it was this guy that had interviewed, like, all these scientists. And, and many scientists, there were some scientists, and we're talking about, like, you know, like, Stanford, like, Harvard, like, those, you know, Ivy League school scientists that said that they would, ad, that they believe, they admit that there wasn't evidence to support evolution, and that there's actually more evidence to support creation. What is creation? Creation, and we're not even talking about Genesis 1. I'm just talking about creation just in overall, in a general sense, is that if there's creation, there was a creator. This jacket didn't just appear out of nothing. Someone created it. Someone designed it. Someone created it. My shoes, they have leather. They have rubber. They have a little bit of metal. They didn't just, you know, happen in an explosion. Someone, their shoes, there's a shoemaker, right? I mean, the thought 
that nothing exploded in itself should tell you, wait a minute, this, this is ridiculous. I was born that night, but not last night. Right? But, but notice that if they teach you that nothing exploded, right? Nothing exploded, and that's how everything came into existence. And then, in evolution, what happens after I die? Well, if we come from nothing, in evolution, after you die, you go to nothing. And the same people that are telling you, you come from nothing, you're going to nothing, but in the middle, it matters. You're important. You matter. How? That doesn't make any sense at all. That, that doesn't make any sense at all. Right? But if we will admit, hey, nothing, something can't come from nothing. There has to be a creator. I mean, the solar system is so complex. There has to be a creator. This earth and the eco ecosystem is so complex, there has to be a creator. Your eye, my eye, is so complex, there has to be a creator. Well, the reason that many scientists do not want to believe in a creator is because the moment we admit there's a creator, in the beginning was the word, and everything was created through him and for him, then we must admit that we are responsible to him. One day we will be held accountable to him. We look around the world and people say, if God exists, why is there so much evil? Well, let me tell you, one day God's going to do something about it. Judgment will come, and you're going to want to be on the side of the word as opposed to being on the opposite end of the word. We want to be with Jesus. We need Jesus. Can someone say amen? So, you know, that's why there's so, uh, uh, there, there's so much uh, anxiety and depression and all these crazy things happening in us emotionally. Why? Because they tell us we come from nothing, we go to nothing, right? But in the beginning, in the beginning. Now, notice verse 4, John chapter 1, verse 4. It says, the word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone, okay? Now, let me tell you about this word, okay? I, I told you about logos, rema, and the verb, right? The word here is logos. That's the word that John is using. Logos, 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 right? That, that's God. That's the entire thought of God, right? Like, like God's, all of God's thoughts, logos. But just like we read in English, many of us, we have a Spanish Bible, and in Spanish, it's translated... Instead of word, which is palabra, it's translated into verbo. En el principio era el verbo. In the beginning was the verb. Y el verbo era con Dios. And the verb was with God. And the verb was God. And then verse 4 would say, The verb gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. The verb, right? The verb is action. Right? Action, movement. Something that affects and in Genesis chapter 1, because John reminds us of, of, of Genesis chapter 1, John starts off with, in the beginning was the word. And that reminds us of Genesis chapter 1. And Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Verse 4, and God saw that the light was good. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and verse 2 says, describes the earth. It describes the earth as formless, as empty, and darkness there was over it, right? As some Bibles would say, instead of formless, would say void. It was void, empty, and there was darkness. This is life without Jesus. This is life without Jesus. Life is formless without Jesus. Life is void without Jesus. That, that's why there's, there's people, and they walk around, and they're like, you know, they, feel, they say that they're enlightened, but then they admit that, hey, like, I don't really know where this is going. Right? That's why there's people that walk around, and, they, and there's, a, there's a, an emptiness to them. They, they, there's a, there's a, 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 a vacuum in them. That there's something missing in them. That, that's why people are like in search of something, right? Some people, they're like in search of something, so it's the next high, and they go from drug to drug to drug. Others are, are, are in search of some type of pleasure, and so it's from, you know, sleeping around with different people and different people or engaging in different things because there's, there's something that's formless, something that's void in them. They're empty. Right? Let me tell you that there's a problem that happens in church. Right? 
You may be in church, but that doesn't mean you're in Christ. You may have grown up in church, but that doesn't mean you've grown up in Christ. So there's a difference of being in church and being in Christ, growing up in church and growing up in Christ. What you want is you want to be in Christ and you want to be growing in Christ, right? So that this part in you that is formless, that is empty, and let me tell you that this stuff sneaks up in us because of what happens in the past, in the beginning, right? These parts in us that are formless and empty that seem dark, all this, we saw last year, 2020, <whistles> cases of depression, <whistles> cases of anxiety, <whistles> cases of suicide, <whistles> cases of attempted suicide. The world saw how dark this world really is. The emptiness in it, the formlessness in it, the void that's around. But thank God that today you have heard the truth. There is light and life, and his name is Jesus Christ. There is life and life, and we find it in Jesus. You find it in Jesus, right? Your, your, your cousin that she acts all crazy, she needs Jesus, right? Your boss that, that he's, all, he, he, he's all crazy, he needs Jesus. Your husband, I'm just kidding. Your husband's a great guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you know, only Sam said amen. None of the sisters said amen. Pastor said your husband's a great guy. None of the, um, that's, a different, that's a different topic for Father's Day. I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> Need Jesus, right? For Jesus to do what he did in the beginning. This world that was formless, he brought form to it. This world that was empty, he filled it with life. And this world that only knew darkness, he put light. And as verse 3 says, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And verse 4 says, and God saw that the light was what? The light was good. Like that. I, I, don't, I don't know how you came in this afternoon. But if you're like me, I'm pretty sure that there's an area in your life that you would say, Pastor Ruben, it's void. There's chaos. Pastor Reuben, there's a part of my life that's empty, a part of my heart that's empty. And I try and fill it with pleasures and different things, and it remains empty. Maybe you're like, Pastor Reuben, all the lights are on, but I still walk in darkness. It's the same answer the same solution for all of those issues. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to invite everyone to close your eyes and let's bow our heads as we prepare to finish this afternoon here at Pueblo's Church. Can you admit that there's something void, something empty, something dark in your life? And you need Jesus. You need that word you need that verb, you need that logos to come and speak life into your life. If today, this afternoon, you say, Pastor, I need Jesus. I'm, I'm, I grew up in church, but I haven't been growing up in Jesus. I'm in church, but I don't know if I'm in Jesus. If today, this afternoon, you say, I need Jesus, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand and then you can put it down. Is there anyone on my left that says, I need Jesus? I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you guys. God bless you in the back. God bless you here in the middle. Here in the center, I see you guys. God bless you. God is with you. God loves you. God bless you too. God is with you. I see you in the very back. God bless you. God, God is with you. Here on my right-hand side, I see you in the back. God bless you. Here in front, I see you. God bless you. I'm like, God is with you. Be, be encouraged. God is with you. You're here, you're here not, not out of coincidence. You're here because there was a word for you today. There was a rema for you today. This moment, just simply start saying, Jesus, come into my life. That's all you have to say. Jesus, come into my life. Just, just repeat that phrase over and over. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I need you. Come into my life. Bring to order that which is out of order. 
Fill those empty spots, those empty places in my life. Bring light into the darkness. Jesus, I need you. I need you in my life. Let me pray over you before we're dismissed. Father, I thank you for Pueblo's Church. I thank you for everyone that came today. I ask, Father, that just like the Holy Spirit in Genesis chapter 1 was over the waters, that the Holy Spirit would be over us today. And I pray that just like Jesus was there in the beginning, that he would be with us here today in this new beginning, speaking life and light into us. Father, those places that are formless, that are void, that are chaotic, I pray that through Jesus, Father, that you would begin to bring order into our lives. Those areas that we're emotionally, we're just chaotic, emotionally we're just off, that you would bring order into our lives. I pray for those areas that we feel so empty in our hearts, where sometimes when we're stressed, we feel empty, where sometimes we're, uh, we're, we're alone, we feel empty. I pray that you would fill us with your holy presence, fill us with your Holy Spirit, fill us with the Spirit of Jesus, Father. And then, Father, those areas of our lives that are dark, that we're embarrassed, we're ashamed of, that we don't want others to, to know and see, today we come and we put it before you. And I pray that the light of Jesus would, would bring light and make that darkness flee from our lives. Father, we praise you and we glorify you and we honor you and we just thank you for all that you're doing and that you're going to continue to do. Everyone here today was created by Jesus for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Yeah.